Hi, this is Diane Chapman, and I've been reading a little more about some of the things you can do in Premiere Plus embroidery software, so I wanted to show you another trick I learned. When you open up the software, this is the Ultra version. You have icons down here, and this icon right here is your Create, so I'm going to click it and it will open up this module. Now I've tried several of these and these first three I haven't had a lot of success with. I'm going to show you today a couple of quick things in this segment how to use the paint window. You can bring things into the draw window as a background picture and I'll show you that in another module, but right now we're going to go into paint. And the reason I use paint first is because paint gives you a little more, uh, it gives you more options. When you put something in paint, you can also use the precise freehand or quick create to modify what you're doing. If you put it into draw, you lose some of those opportunities. So we'll go into paint, and this is where you can load a picture. Now I've been working on some intricate pictures, and it takes quite a while, so I'm going to just load something real simple here. If you go into your documents, Premiere Plus, samples, create pictures, they give you some sample pictures to play around with. So we'll choose this blue jay click next next and i'm going to leave the hoop as my viking 80 by 80. if you need to change that you would go in here choose the type of uh, machine you have and the size of the hoop and then of course if you want it natural or rotated or you can enter a specific size if you have an unusual one and then we'll click next. It recommends the colors. I'm not sure why it does that. And we click finish. So now I have this bird set up here, but all it is is a picture. And I need to somehow get color over it that the software will recognize so that it can turn into an embroidery. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more things that you can do with this software, and if you're further along than I am, please feel free to let me know. You can even email me at diane at mousetracks.com, and that's spelled D-I-A-N, there's no E on my name, the at sign M-O-U-S-E-T-R-A-X dot com. I'd love to hear from you if you know more than I know at this point. So once you're in this area, you can do a couple things here with these tools. You can choose the paintbrush. You can make it different sizes of square or round. And you choose a color. Now this is the foreground and the background colors. You can switch them by clicking here. I was a graphic designer for many years, so a lot of this came to me from that experience. You also have the uh, color pickers. So if you wanted to pick a color out, you could choose this for the foreground and click, and the foreground will turn into the color you choose. You could take the background, click on a color, and that would change. But what I'm going to do is just uh, choose black. Say I want to put ink over this, and the ink will eventually become the actual embroidery thread. So say I choose this, and I make it a square, and I start sketching in black. Well, obviously black is impossible to see over black, or nearly impossible. So much, what you might want to do, which is what I've been doing, to make sure that I 
capture all the areas that I need to color is I will use some other color. So say yellow. Now you can sketch over this and I'm doing it with a mouse. I'm going to use my stylist instead. So you could go in here and you could zoom in and you could really sketch this if you needed to do it that way. And I actually was starting to do it that way until I learned how ridiculously easy the other ways are. So we'll go back out here. You can also use lines. So you could do lines. You could choose the different lines that you want. But if you use this paint bucket, if you're familiar with graphic, paints will flood an area with the color. I didn't think the software recognizes the color segments on a bitmap like this, but lo and behold, they do. So you can go up here and say, okay, this, 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 click there, oops, missed that. So I hit Control Z to undo, and I'll get down here in a bigger area. Now this one's gonna be tricky because as you can see, it's not capturing all of those areas. So what I could do is I could go and click the undo and get rid of the garbage that I did there and do it properly. But for this sample, I'm just gonna show you like this. So now I can go in and choose some other color. Say this will be purple and we'll use pink for the blues. Now, obviously this looks ridiculous because this birdie doesn't look the way you'd think this birdie should look, especially since he's a blue jay. Get rid of the background. But what I'm doing is, at least now I know I have covered all the original. And when I turn it into an embroidery file, I can easily go into the threads and turn all the greens into whites or uh, the purples into blues, a uh, light blue and the dark violet into the darker blue. Of course, you'll have to remember what you did. Yellows would be black, etc. So if you have a more complicated picture, you might want to write down so you remember what color is what color. But at least this way, you know, you get everything done. So once you have your picture done, obviously I should fix this down here, but I'm not going to bother. You go in, and it's a good idea to save your picture. It's a bitmap, but if you want to save it, this way you can go back to it if you need to make some adjustments. And then you can go to the precise, the freehand, or the quick create, and use these tools to make additional changes to some of this or add other items. Oh, there's one other thing here in the paint is down here. This is just for drawing lines. This is for drawing different uh, shapes. And this, when you click, it will give you some different graphics. So you could click on one of these items. Unfortunately, when you click on it, it doesn't close, even though it does add them, so you have to click open. It dumps it on there, and then you have to close it. I guess it assumes you might want to add more than one of the items, but I'm going to delete that. So now you can go to the wizard, and at this point it'll ask you if you want to save it. Now you just saw me save the picture but that was a bitmap. Now it asks you if you want to save what you've colored and you want to definitely say yes. And you'll notice down here, this is an EDO. And I forgot exactly what it is, but it's an editable um, design object, I believe is the EDO. And you want to save it in this format because this is, some people call it a wireframe in graphic design. This is your master edited version. 
you still have that bitmap, but if you brought the bitmap in, you'd have to recolor it. This is the recolored one. So if you discover that the embroidery came out wrong, you can go back to this work and you don't have to recolor it. So, oops, we'll call this bird. And I actually did it as a test, so yes, we're gonna update it. Now it opens up the wizard and you could trace it or do a border, but I'm going to do an actual embroidery. And here's the um, wizard as if you were doing a photo. And you can make some adjustments here, the fabric and things like that. I'm just going to say finish. And now you'll notice, rather than a picture, it is threads. You can look and you can see that those are embroidery threads and now I can go in and choose the purple and make it that dark blue and change the yellow and I forgot what it's supposed to be I think the yellow was white um, oh I screwed up here because that yellow should have been black but it chose a different color or a different version of yellow. And I'd have to go through here and modify this all, which I won't bore you with because these are kind of silly colors too. But you get the idea, so you can make adjustments here. But also notice when I select it all, move it away, your bitmap is still under there. I'm not sure exactly why and it's not really necessary, but it's there. And although I have gotten rid of it, I don't know that I really had to. What I did was I saved the embroidery to the clipboard. I would copy it to the clipboard and then I said, file new. And I didn't save my changes. I canceled this. And I dumped my embroidery back on the screen. It seemed to work and it got rid of the garbage in the background just because I'm picky about what's on my screen. Now you can grab individual parts and if you can see the highlights around and you can right click and you can go into properties and you can change the pattern so now that's a little bit different. It's hard to see, but let's choose something bigger here. We'll take this and we'll make it something ridiculous. Now you can see that it's changed from straight lines to these, uh, this pattern. The other thing you wanna watch, which I'm still learning about, is underlay. I didn't know what this is. What underlay is, is it will do some scratchy stitching underneath to make a base so that when it does the pattern stitch over it, it's a little sturdier. If you've ever watched your machine do that, you know what I'm talking about. But if it's too thick, and in some cases it has been for me when I've been messing around with lace, so I would say none or low, but I still have to work on some of this. And you can also change the angle of the design. So there's several different things you can do here, and I won't get into all of them in this particular video. But once you, I'm going to undo this pattern. So once you have the embroidery the way you want it, then you would go here and export it out and you can save it out as a bird and then take it to your machine and test embroider it. And of course you can always watch it up here in your life view, you can see what it's going to look like or you can go to your design player and I wish they allowed you to zoom in on this better but you can watch this play out and you can speed it along. See, there's the underlaying. 
it does a little bit of stuff first and then does the pattern over it. See, there's the underlay and then the actual pattern. So you may or may not need it. You need to see how thick your embroidery is. So this will show you how it stitches out. And you can do a lot of editing through here. Um, these are groups and these are the items that fall under that color group. There's a lot to learn in this software and I'm learning bits and pieces of it. But hopefully sharing this section will help you understand yours a little more because I'm sorry their manuals have a lot to desire. They tell you all about the things that it will do, but they're not real good at showing you how to actually do it. So hopefully this helps.